here we want to prove theorem 1.1.2 and it's stated by the following. Given integers a and b that are not both zero and d the greatest common divisor of a and b, there exist integers u and v so that we can write the greatest common divisor of a and b as a linear combination of a and b. And so this theorem in particular is called Bayes' identity. And so let's prove it. The first thing we're going to do is start with a set S. So let set S be the set of all linear combinations of A and B. And we're going to write that as the set S equals AM plus AM. So the set of all AM plus AN. So the set of all linear combinations of A and B where M and N are integers. And so what we want to do here is first show that S has a smallest element and then next show that that smallest element is the greatest common divisor. So let's first start with step one. To do, to find the smallest element, we want to first note that a squared plus b squared is equal to aa plus bb. And so it is actually an element of our set S. Now, what do we know about a squared plus b squared? Um, we know that it is always going to be positive. And since it's an element of our set, we know that S contains positive elements. And so this means that by the well-ordering axiom, the set S has a least positive element. So let's call that element T. So by the well-ordering axiom, And then we know that that element is going to be, um, call it T. Okay, so we've got our smallest element of S. We're going to call it T. And so what do we want to do with this? So the next step is we want to prove that T that we found in step one is the GCD of A and B. And so that's going to tell us that T is equal to D, and then we will be done. So how do we do this? Well, since T, the aim of this is to show that T is the GCD, we have to show it satisfies the two axioms that characterize the definition of greatest common divisor. So we first start by showing that T divides A and T divides B. So note, First, that T is equal to AU plus BV for some integers U and V. And that's just because T is in the set S, and so we can write it as a linear combination of A and B. And we want to show that T divides A and T divides B. So we also note that by the division algorithm, we know that there exists integers q and r so that we have the following statement. We have that a is equal to tq plus r with 0 less than or equal to r, which is strictly less than t. So this just tells us that we can divide um, t by a, and we will get a quotient and a remainder. So how do we use this? We're trying to show that T divides A and T divides B.
and we're going to get the following set of equations. So let's start with R, and we can rearrange this equation here given by the division algorithm to solve for R. So that's going to give us that R is equal to A minus T Q. But now we can substitute for T using this equation here, and we, so we get that R equals A minus AU plus BV times Q. And we can distribute this negative and multiply by Q as well, and we're going to get A minus AUQ minus BVQ. And if we group these terms together um, in the following fashion, A um, 1 minus UQ minus, excuse me, plus B times negative VQ, what do we see? We see precisely that we have written R as a linear combination of A and B because we could simply choose two um, variables, let's say X and Y, to represent what we have in parentheses here. So this shows that R equals AX plus BY for some integers X and Y. And so that shows us that R is a linear combination of A and B. So R is in our set S. But then what does that mean? By the division algorithm, we had that R was strictly less than T, which we assumed was the smallest element of S. So because it's strictly less than T, it can't be positive. Because T is the least uh, positive element that satisfies a linear combination of A and B. So since it cannot be positive, and we have that it must be greater than or equal to zero, then it must just be equal to zero. And so what does this tell us? So R is a linear combination of, actually we already showed that, we just showed that R was equal to zero. Okay, here we go, guys. I'm back on track. So this means that we get the following equation. We get that A is equal to TQ plus R, but then R is equal to zero. So A is equal to TQ, which means, drum roll, that T divides A. So we found this least element of our set S, and now we had set off to show that S was the GCD of A and B. We first want to show that it's a positive divisor, excuse me, a common divisor of A and B. And so we've now shown that T divides A. And then if we do the exact same argument, similarly, we were going to get that T divides B. So we've shown that T is a common divisor of A and B. It only remains to show that if there's some other common divisor of A and B, then that element is less than or equal to t. So to show that, suppose there exists some integer z c such that, I'm abbreviating that, abbreviating that st, c divides a and c divides b. Well, by definition of divides, this tells us that A equals C times K and B equals C times L for some integers K and L. So we get the following. If we consider T, we know that that's equal to AU plus BV, but then we can substitute for A here, CK times U, and we can substitute for B, a CL times V. 
And if we rewrite this, drop the parentheses, and then we regroup by factoring a C out of both terms, we get C times KU plus LV. And so what this shows us is that we have written T as C times some integer. Um, we could call this Z, for instance. And so that tells us that C divides T. Now we know that every divisor of T is less than or equal to T. And I meant to say it's less than or equal to the absolute value of T. Um, and this is a remark that we had earlier uh, in this section. If we're given any divisor of a number, it has to be less than or equal to the absolute value of that number. So we use that property here, but then we know that T is a positive number. And so the absolute value of T is just T. So we have that C is less than or equal to T. And so it follows that T is the GCD. We've showed that it satisfies both of the criteria and the definition for greatest common divisor. And so in the next slide, let's talk about how we could use this theorem to illustrate an example. So we're given this set here, and it's the set of all linear combinations of 6 and 15. And what we're trying to do is find the smallest positive integer in the given set. So if you note from theorem 3. Point, excuse me, theorem 1.12, that told us if we remember the proof, we set out to find the smallest element that was what we call t, and then we showed that that was actually the greatest common divisor. So here, all we need to do is find the GCD of 6 and 15, and that will be the least positive element. And so what is the GCD of 6 and 15? That's going to be 3. So by theorem... 1.12, we which is Bezu's lemma, we can write 3 as a linear combination of 6 and 15. That is, we can write 3 equals... 6 times u plus 15 times v for some integers u and v. For example, we could take u to be 2, negative 2, and 15 to be 1, and we're going to get uh, negative 12 plus 15 equals 3. We could also take u to be a positive 3 and 15 to be a negative 1. So we would get 18 minus 15, which would be 3. And so Bezu's identity does not guarantee that u and v are unique, just that they exist. Okay, that's just kind of a, a remark. And from the proof of the last theorem, we know that this element 3, the greatest common divisor, is going to be the least element of this set.